Hello everyone, this is Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel. It's a bright sunny day here today and I thought I would do a fun little ephemera project. It's not really a tutorial because there's really no skill involved. It's just an idea and something that I'm working on. You know, for 2020, I'm trying to organize and create a lot of ephemera. I have ephemera folders, ephemera files, and I'm going to be using this one today that I made from some vintage um, National Audubon Society Nature Program boxes. They used to have books in them, but they're just little drawers. And I've been putting journal cards and different pieces that I can use in my journals. So I'm going to be putting them in there. So this video is sponsored by In Love Arts. I'll have the link to their shop below. And they sent me this paper and I haven't actually looked at the patterns yet. It's a six by six. And sometimes six by six can be a little difficult when you're trying to make journals. You're not sure exactly what to do with it because it's kind of a strange size for pages and what kind of ephemera can you make from it. So today I'm going to be trying to turn this paper into tuck spots and have a whole bunch of tuck spots ready for my journals. So I'm gonna open up and see what this paper looks like. This is called Cranberry. There's 40 different pieces. Wow, that's a lot more than I thought. So I probably will not use all of them today, but that's really cool. And it comes in this plastic case. Oh, it's just a, just opens like that. That's neat. You could use, it's like a vellum. So you could use that in your journal too. That's neat. All right. Oh, It has a very neat texture to it. It's almost like a linen or a handmade type paper. There's a bunch of fibers. I don't know if you can see the fibers, but these colors are pretty. So I'm gonna pick out a few pages or a few patterns that I um, want to turn into text spots. Ones that I mean, they're all great. I just don't want to cut up all 40 of them. So these are some really neat patterns. I think I'm going to go with uh, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. But you got to see some of these other beautiful ones. Isn't that pretty? It would take too long to do the same thing over and over again on the video. Because I'm going to try this. Okay. All right, I've got my scissors. I think I want my paper trimmer. I'm gonna keep it a little straighter. Okay, so these are six by six. So I am going to cut it in half. So three inches. It does not have to be exact. You could do different sizes too, but I just kind of want a pile of, oh, these aren't even the same size. The paper is a little smaller. They're not cut exact. That's okay. That's cool. Doesn't matter for what I'm doing. They may not even be six. I assumed it was six by six, but I think they're just, well, maybe. That's cool though. I don't mind that they're not the same size. All right, and then I'm going to cut it again in half. So I have some squares. They're really nice that they coordinate. So if I'm creating a journal that uses these colors, or um, then it would be perfect to have a whole bunch of tuck spots to use throughout the journal. I think that's too many sheets at once. This is a wimpy paper cutter and it cannot cut through that many pages without failing. I'm really trying to get a stockpile of ephemera and I know that Maybe um, tuck spots aren't really ephemera. I just kind of lump it into that. They're elements that you can use in a journal. So now I have pretty much three by three-ish squares. And what I'm going to do is tear. Now you could take your scissors and you could cut, but I want a really neat torn edge on my tuck spots. This paper is really good quality. It's hard to tear, but when you do tear it, I don't know if you can see the fibers sticking up, but that is really neat. I will try to link this exact paper pad below. If I cannot find the link for the exact one, 
Um, I have been happy with all of the paper that I have gotten from them. I've had vellum and regular paper. They've always had really good and neat paper selection. I did not ask for this set, I don't think. They sent it and I'm really glad they did because I don't think I would have requested it because I didn't realize what type of paper it was. So now that's really hard to rip. It's kind of a workout for your fingers. But I'm not trying to keep it perfectly even. I'm just trying to rip from one corner to the next. So I have a neat, unique ripped edge on each one. These are fairly small tuck spots. Um, they're meant to go either, okay, I don't have a journal with me right now, but we're gonna assume or pretend this is a journal page. You could do a top tuck or any bottom tuck too. It's just a little tuck that you could slip a tag or some ephemera or a photo into, but still leave a lot of room in the background for journaling or collaging. Like I said, this isn't exactly a tutorial. I mean, anybody can cut squares of paper and rip them, <laughs> but it's just an idea. These are perfect things to do when you are winding down for the night, watching TV, putting on your favorite YouTube video, kind of multitask. If you feel like doing something with your hands, you could make up a bunch of these. So I took six um, sheets of paper and each sheet has four squares. And then when I rip it in half, that's eight. So six times eight. So I think I'm going to have 48 tuck spots and they all coordinate. So that is really cool. My fingers are getting tired. So it's a good thing I didn't try to do all 40 pages. Almost through ripping these. You could um, sew, take your sewing machine and sew around the edges. When I'm done ripping, I'm going to get some inks and add a layer of ink to the edges so they're pretty much ready to go. I will either sew them when I'm ready to put them on the page or I will just glue them on. You can layer flowers or stickers or other things up as well onto the pocket when you are creating your page. Two left and my fingers are screaming. This is really good quality paper. I really like it. Okay, so now that I have all my tuck spots, I'm gonna decide what ink. I brought a pink. I brought In Love Art sells this too. This is a primary color. I don't think I'm gonna use it with the purple because these are really bright. They have other uh, palettes than just the primary one. So you might wanna check that. I also have frayed burlap and I brought some aged brass wax that I'm thinking about trying. So we might try a couple of different things. Um, we're gonna start off with the Distress Oxide frayed burlap. And then I just actually use the pad to flick it onto the edges and that is perfect. That's the look I want. It is just a, highlights the little fibers, gives a little messy edge. And because the paper is white and like pastel, it adds a little bit of a vintage or grunge to it, which goes well with the journal kits that I will probably use it with. I'll probably use it with some of my purple kits. I believe I have at least three by now. I have um, Down Purple Lane with, not Wisteria and Roses, that one's not really purple. Um, Pretty in Purple and Lilacs and, or Lavender and Lace. And as I just ink these up, I don't worry about it being perfect. 
just wherever the ink falls. Kind of makes each one unique. And it will be really nice when I am making journals, especially if I'm going to do a set of journals, like a set of budget junk journals. My budget junk journals are um, journals that have little to no embellishing and they're made um, pretty simply. But a lot of times I like to make multiples of the same journal before I list it or a, the same kit. And this would coordinate. So if I'm using my favorite purple junk journal kit, whatever one I want to use, then I can use these corners in several journals and they're ready to go. It's kind of calming. You just want something peaceful. You don't have to bring a lot of things with you. It's not precise work. Probably do it in the car pretty easily too. And if you are not a fan of the ripped edge, use your scissors or your paper trimmer and give it a nice clean cut edge. I just really like a ripped edge. Uh, my friend Joanne, who she sells things in my shop as well, she's my kind of like my business partner. She does a beautiful ripped edge on her pockets and so she inspired me to do more ripped edges. And then you don't have to worry about perfection. Who has time for perfection anyway? <laughs> well, I don't. I think that's one of the reasons why I enjoy junk journaling so much and making crafts and elements for junk journals is because perfection isn't needed. Quality is, but um, not perfection. My hands are so cold doing this. I'm in my back room and the heat for some reason does not reach this end of the house. And it's rather early in the morning, so it's still chilly. It'll warm up today, but I did not put slippers on. So I have bare feet and I have a t-shirt on. And my hands are cold. It's getting hard to feel the paper. Oh well, I'll go get another cup of coffee and warm up after this maybe. Okay, so those are all inked. I do not know if I will like this on the edges, but I'm gonna try it. I love this on journal covers. I've used it a couple times. I'm using it on a journal I'm currently making now. It's Art Alchemy from Finnebear, and this is the Metallic Aged Brass Wax. And normally I use my finger, as you can see. I'm gonna try one of these little daubers. I got these from In Love Arts as well when I got this. And um, they don't last forever. They're, they're meant to be like a consumable. You use them for a little bit. But I'm wondering if this will work well. And I don't wanna get too much on my desk. So I'm going to see if I can grab a, oh, here we go. Here's just a scrap paper. This is my William Morris wallpaper and it didn't print right. It's only printed in the corner and I was gonna cut it out and use it for something, but we will use it as a scrap page. And see, I don't know if I want to, it kind of has a gold, it says brass. Um, it does kind of look goldish to me, but I'm just gonna maybe add a little bit onto the edges and see if, that adds something to it or if I want to keep it with just it definitely shows the fibers more can you see the fibers coming out really well so that that's neat I kind of just grunged it up I don't know that I'm going to do it on all of them I'm going to see It's really highlighting the fibers in the paper. So that is really cool. It's 
giving it kind of a brassy look. So I am just dabbing it in there and then kind of rubbing it over the white parts. It is really highlighting and it's also kind of making it look a little more vintagey. So that's kind of cool. You could probably do that just with a distress stain too and not the wax, but that looks really neat. I'm not going to do all of them like that because I want to leave some white, but that looks really cool. Like that one's, it's not going to do as much, but I'm going to try it on this one. It only takes a little bit, but you can really tell the texture on the paper. Cool. So just kind of an assembly line when you're creating things for your ephemera. And then also already have a plan like I did at the beginning of this video that I was going to put it in my organizing drawers here. That way they don't get lost. Before this year, I had... Um, I have piles of ephemera and pieces that I would just throw into bigger drawers, but they weren't really, I don't know, they just got a whole bunch of stuff thrown in and sifting through it for months and months and things are getting torn and things are getting ripped and it's just not fun anymore. So I wanted to have a little bit of a better organizational system. I'm not going to organize nitty gritty, meaning I'm not going to do, oh, here's everything I have that's butterflies, everything that I have that's pink, but anything ready to go for a journal, I want it to have a place. Doesn't that look so neat? I love that. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do all of these. I want to leave some white, but I'm going to do a couple more. I'll do, let me try, do do these ones and then I'll leave the other ones white but assembly line like I was saying is great because you get a lot accomplished in a relatively short period of time and I'm gonna have um, many 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 tuck spots for my journals and that's gonna be so nice for contrast I am going to try that um, frayed burlap distress oxide and see if it looks different than this wax because more likely you have a brown ink on hand you might not have this wax this is the only wax I have so they're rather expensive and I don't use it for a lot so I don't buy all the different colors or at least I haven't yet so I'm going to put my wax away and I'm going to see what happens when I use frayed burlap I'm just going to use the same dauber. Okay, when I use the frayed burlap, it's darker and it does not pull out the fibers as well. Okay, so here's the contrast. I like the wax better, but you could still definitely do that. Just, I don't think it has as bold or as yeah so this is the distress oxide and that's the wax it's hard, probably hard to tell on camera but so ideas ideas I hope that gave you a bunch of ideas here is my organizer and I'm going to stack these up not just throw them in there which is normally what I am guilty of doing And where do I want them? There's a bunch of squares in here. So I have a nice little place in this corner. And I will have all of these textured, fibrous tuck spots ready to go. I'm sure that you will see them in journals to come. I hope you'll check out In Love Arts. Maybe make a little purchase. Give yourself a, some fun new things to play with this year I will definitely be doing more videos showing off what you can do with things from In Love Arts. They should are sponsoring me into the new year 
and they always send me amazing things to work with. Just in this video alone, I've used their paper, I've showed off their ink pad, and I've used the dauber. And get the rest of these stacked up nicely in the corner, and I have a whole bunch ready to go. That makes me happy and excited. Super simple things can really make you feel nice and satisfied. And I'm going to keep this paper because even though it's messy on this side, I can still make a pocket or cut something out from that. So, you know, think about what you can use your scraps for. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.